In this video, we share everything you need to know, all the information you must gather and know about a stock before making a trade. Without it, you'll just be flailing around as an underperforming trader headed soon for failure. Hi, I'm Mike Bellafieri, co-founder of SMB Capital, and we're a proprietary trading desk located in Midtown Manhattan. And I'm also the author of the Trading Classic, One Good Trade, and The Playbook. In this video, see the template our new traders created of what you need to know before making a trade. This will help you build your template that's essential if you want to succeed as a trader. All right, so let's go over everything you need to know before you actually enter a trade. The reason why this is important is because we want you guys to have complete learning experiences <coughs> excuse me, during each trading session. Today is a terrific opportunity to learn a lot. You know, we've got Grub, terrific learning experience. Okay, we've got Texas Roadhouse, pretty good learning experience. We've got Twitter, good learning experience. We've got Beyond, terrific learning experience. And we need to get this straight for you guys in this room right now so that you are getting the types of learning experiences that you need to get. People who succeed at this job get this right from the beginning and do this every day. Okay? We had some discussions about this in the AM meeting. If there are important details, for instance, about the news that you don't know, that is not a complete learning experience. If you do not know you come in and trade Grub today and you don't know that they missed by a lot on Q4 and you're wondering why is it so weak, why is it so weak, why is it so weak, or you don't know the competition is starting to really impact their sales or that they're, the new customers that they're bringing on, they're not making as much on as in the past. If you don't know that, then you're not going to get the good experience, the best experience that you need to trade Grub today. And that's just one opportunity. And this compounds daily on your learning. You have to get this right. So what we're going to try and attempt to do today is give you, a, give you guys an idea of a template that you can develop. I'm not suggesting that this should be your template. I am suggesting that you need a template. I am suggesting that you need standards for everything you need to know before you trade a stock. You should follow it. You want to be consistent with it. When you're consistent with this template, again, that's going to give you experience from which to build on. So that you start to build intuition, trading skill, you get better at actually what we're doing here. This is super important. And I said this in the AM meeting again. Like we're not going to have another meeting where I sit in the AM meeting and you do not know the full details of the stock that you're talking about that we should be trading on the open. And if you do, you're getting, you're getting sent back to your seat. And the reason for that is you're going to fail as a trader. This exercise, getting this right right now, is going to determine if you're not going to do the work here for something like this, you're not going to do the work in other places, it's not going to happen for you. I do not want to have the conversation with you in our office about how we have to transition into a new job and help you with that. I don't want to have that conversation. You don't want to be in that conversation. We're not going to have those conversations anymore where you know half the information. We're not going to have a conversation where I ask you where the long-term levels are on a, on a particular stock that we're trading and you don't know, or the short interest. We're not going to have those conversations because we know where it leads. Okay, so we're going to build a template. You are going to individualize this. Okay, and you can make it more specific than some of the ideas that we make. But you need a template that you need to stick with. If you do not know this information, you are not prepared to trade a stock. If you are not prepared to trade a stock, 
you are not getting the valuable trading information that you need, the, the, the valuable trading experience that you need. You need them. That's how you get better. <clears throat> all right, so Max, what are some of the, and you guys all sat in a, in a group and came up with some things we need to be thinking about before we trade a stock. Let's go through that one by one. Absolutely. So the first thing is going to be news. So basically, what is the fundamental catalyst for the stock during the day? Uh, the second thing is going to be RVOL. So what is the relative volatility today compared to its uh, previous history? The third thing is, is it above or below VWAP? So is it trending higher or lower? Uh, VWAP is obviously very important because institutions will use this as to kind of gauge uh, just kind of buying and selling pressure as well as uh, you can use that just to see um, where the stock is trending. Fourth is also or is going to be ATR. So this is the average true range. So what this will tell you is uh, what is uh, the average distance between the high and the low during a average trading day. So what is the moving or the move potential for the stock during the day? Uh, the reason why that this is important is because if let's say a stock has a five ATR and it's already moved five, it could mean that it's moved its uh, potential for that day and that the risk reward for your trade is worse. Um, uh, the next thing is going to be average volume. Uh, this is uh, more so just as a baseline. Uh, we all like to use kind of a minimum average volume of 1 million, just so that way uh, we could be entering stocks that are liquid. Sixth is going to be the long-term chart. So where are we in the daily or the weekly? Are we breaking uh, major levels? So for example, like today in Grub, breaking down to around uh, 38, this was below levels that we've uh, not seen over the last few years. The 52-week uh, low before today was around 52. So obviously breaking down to 38, has some strong significance, and uh, and uh, on the weekly, uh, the low in 2017 was around 32. So just kind of uh, keeping these levels in mind is very critical for when trying to gauge um, uh, direction and the and the uh, potential uh, magnitude for a trade. Seven is going to be the major ETF movement and strength. So for example, if you were trading a semi stock off of a, a earning report and you see that there's overall strong relative strength in the semis ETF uh, versus uh, the market, uh, this is something that you should consider before entering your trade. Let me just make a, a quick point about the long-term chart. So we're not fundamental analysts. We're not pretending to be fundamental analysts. But when we read the news before the open, when we read the news catalyst before the open, we do need to be able to gauge potentially how far this stock can move. We do need to be able to gauge, potentially, is this something that could finish low of day or high of day? We do need, be, need to be able to gauge, are there a bunch of people off sides that is going to bring in a certain type of order flow? Okay, so it's not about you being a fundamental analyst or predicting exactly where the stock is going to go. It's about you understanding that a stock can move directionally quite a bit. It could do so potentially for multiple days, and uh, it, could do, it could do so cleanly or not. And that is, go, that is the context of your trade so that if you see weakness, and we're not really anywhere near, you know, if you see weakness in the order flow, and we're not really anywhere near long-term support, and we've got a really negative news catalyst, and this is something that could finish low a day, and this is something where a lot of people are off sides, that's going to help us inform where we're going to take our covers. Okay, or with Tesla recently, if we are looking for a breakout above 300, the news catalyst is going to inform, the short interest is going to inform the type of move that we could see to help us with our, with our exit. Does that make sense? 
So I guess that kind of leads into the next point, just kind of understanding the uh, catalyst. So for example, uh, today with Grub, it was obviously a news catalyst. Whereas last Friday, we all knew that the uh, uh, 300 level on uh, Tesla was very significant because that's where it kind of stalled right at Thursday at the close. And then once that level broke Friday on strong volume, the stock just shot up and didn't look back. So just uh, understanding what strength or what's a, a significance the catalyst is, as well as the type, is very critical. Uh, the next thing is going to be so we can and, and just to go over this. So we are looking for catalysts to trade. That's what makes this the super stocks in play opportunity. Those are the super stocks in play. Those that have catalysts. Catalysts can be from a news catalyst. Catalysts can come from a really terrific technical catalyst. So uh, the next thing is going to be tape and uh, confirmation. So for example, if let's say you wanted to do a trade off of VWAP, you'd want to see that the tape is showing you signs of buyers right above VWAP. So, so this would offer you some confirmation and then uh, you'd want to see a push away from price. So being able to read the tape and kind of just see how the buyers and sellers are interacting is very critical. If you want to learn three real-world setups that our traders use, including the simple setup that we teach all of our new traders and the setup that turned one of our traders into a seven-figure big money earner, check out the free webinar that we're currently running. Just go ahead and click the link that should be appearing right now at the top right-hand corner of your screen. That's going to open up this free registration page in the new window. So don't worry, you're not going to lose this video. You're going to learn more in a couple of hours from this trading workshop than from years of online education. Uh, the next thing is going to be short interest. And the reason why that this is important is that if let's say there was a stock that had a, a very high short interest, there's going to be the uh, potential for a squeeze or just overall uh, realizing uh, what this like level is could just kind of um, help you gauge uh, sentiment and just overall squeeze uh, uh, potential. Yeah, so if the short interest is particularly high, that can bring out buyers. Exactly. And so when we were talking about trading Tesla, and we want to know what the short interest is, the higher the short interest, the more potential buyers there can be when it had its positive news catalyst. We were thinking about trading Grubhub, even though we were leaning short, that helps us inform that one of the patterns that may occur is a, a spike intraday, even though it's potentially going to finish low a day, and we need to game plan for that. Uh, the next thing is going to be stock float. So for example, if you were trading a low float stock with only 1 million shares for the float, then this is obviously something that is very important to realize before uh, uh, entering the stock. Whereas if let's say you're trading a Uber or something with a billion shares to the stock flow, then uh, knowing this could, could just help you gauge the uh, liquidity and the potential uh, volatility. Yeah, same thing with Microsoft. Big contract, $10 billion contract from the Defense Department. How much can it go up because it's so thick? When you're trading an IPO, what are the IPOs that surprise us the most? The one where there are not that many shares available. What are the low floats that surprise us the most? Tend to be ones where the float is, is lowest. Uh, the next thing will be the institutional ownership. So the reason why that this is important is that if you see a name with 90 or 95 uh, percent um, ownership there, then uh, this could um, uh, tell you that there's going to be strong support for the stock or that like, you might actually see these firms come in and defend the name or buy it back up if, let's say, it, it, um, there's some like, negative catalyst or it, or it like, gaps down. Uh, the next thing is going to be the, the S&P. So uh, where are we in the overall market? So are we uh, trending up? Are we trending down? Uh, just kind of just like what levels of uh, volatility, as well as just uh, kind of understanding what these uh, key levels are or just inflection points, just to gauge like whether or not they will see uh, large moves and also overall uh, market news as well. So for example, last month, the ISM uh, number was a, a very uh, critical number for the market. So if you were trading, then this is something that 
uh, 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 you'd obviously want to be aware of uh, before entering your trade. Uh, the next thing is, is going to be where am I right or wrong on this trade? So for example, if you were trading this versus a, a key support level, then uh, you're wrong on this trade if it breaks down below this uh, support level. Whereas uh, you're right if you see some sort of a breakout and you see buyers come in uh, on the tape. I think that's an important one to mention. And, yeah. and you know, particularly for our A plus trades, we want to be setting our stops for where we're definitely wrong. And when, we, when we're calculating our risk on the particular trade, we want to, we want to calculate the risk for the real stop particularly on our A-plus trades. We, we, we don't want to be cutting them short. We don't, we don't want to have our stops being too tight, particularly on our A-plus trades. Uh, the next thing is going to be two-day VWAP. Uh, this can be very useful for just understanding potential uh, targets or stops in the stock and just kind of overall gauging where the stock is in the relation to the to like the last uh, few days of trading. We haven't talked a lot about that. We'll talk some more about that. Shark's going to come in next week and talk about his beyond trade. He's been short beyond for, uh, for a long time. And then when McDonald's uh, came out, remember the big gap up? Mm -hmm. When McDonald's announced that uh, they were going to start experimenting in Canada and we had that huge gap up and, and, and him holding through that and then adding when it started to fail on that particular day. He made a really great trade in that, so he's gonna come in and talk to you guys about that. But he uh, really uses multiple day VWAPs. And so I threw this in here for you guys to be thinking about um, because that is gonna be something that you'd be thinking about. Like for instance, today you guys have been talking a lot about uh, shop and spot, Spotify and, and shop. And so particularly for Spotify, we wouldn't want to just look at intraday VWAP to trade that. We would want to look at two-day VWAP for informing our decisions today. So next Monday, he's, he's teed up to come and talk to you guys. Awesome. Uh, the next thing is going to be um, uh, the entry stop um, and target. So I guess this is somewhat similar to if you're right or wrong. But before actually entering the trade, you want to plan out where you should be exiting, um, you know, uh, if you're right, uh, where like, you're wrong, and also uh, fighting for uh, uh, price as well, and just uh, making sure that the entry offers you a good uh, risk reward. Uh, the next thing is going to be the gap percentage. So for example, if a stock is having a huge gap um, at the open, then this is obviously something that you should be aware of so that way you can kind of gauge whether or not you think that there's going to be a fade or some sort of a, a, a follow through, but also just to be overall aware of what's going on. We talked about that last time, we talked about that with Twitter. Yeah. So when, when Twitter opens and had gapped down a ton, we talked about how because it's gapping down so much, we need to be a little bit more careful than normal because it's gapped down so much, even though it's such a negative news catalyst, we we'll have to be careful about getting in at better prices. Uh, the next thing is going to be who is in control, how is the stock trending. So just kind of a few examples from the last week or so. Last week in IRBT, we saw that right off the open there were strong buyers that came in and the stock trended up for the first 45 minutes. So kind of just realizing that buyers are in control is something that is very critical if you wanted to try to short this name as you want to see some sort of change in character before actually following through. Uh, for example, being able to identify this would be seeing higher lows as well as, as um, higher highs, as it means that sellers can't break uh, prior prices and buyers are, are uh, taking out those sellers. Uh, the next thing is going to be what kind of trade am I making? Is it a playbook trade? So for example, are you making a pullback trade? Are you trying to trade a breakout? Is this a move to move trade where it's more of a scalp? Is this a trade to hold? Just kind of game planning this before you, you enter the trade will allow you to not, I guess, panic or take profits too quickly because you're frazzled by small moves. Yeah, I mean, you made a good scalp trade in Texas Roadhouse uh, on the open. We want to make sure that we're, under, we're understanding we're making a scalp trade. Had pulled in, held the bid, that's a scalp trade. And then there were other trades. Then there was 
a break of the opening range trade. That has different variables. Twitter is, this is the first day that it's been green at all since it's Newsday. And for that, there's a support play to be made. Tesla was a second day breakout trade. Really, really important level. So we want to be thinking about these trades. Beyond's been a swing short for, for Shark for, for a long period of time. And, but, but you have to understand, you have to build your playbook, and then you want to trade your playbook and judge yourself based on how well you actually trade it overall. So if you listen to Shark in his AM meeting, he's, he's had a really, really great month, but he'll talk a lot about how He's, he's, he's judging himself based on how he's trading, not his P&L. And so we want to be judging ourselves based on how well we're trading our playbook trades. But, um, and then for those of, of you guys who don't know, uh, the playbook comes from my second book, The Playbook. That, that idea of building your trading business by finding the setups that make the most sense to you, that you measure and trade with edge, and then uh, doing more of those types of trades. But the first, the first part is just understanding what kind of trade you're making. All right, so we got time of day, and we got, that matters, right? We got the open, we got the middle of the day, and we got the close. Those are all different times. You should have different playbook trades based on time of day. So we're gonna have a different playbook on the open. We'll, we'll do more opening drives, we'll do more scalps, will be uh, more selective with our trades to hold. The middle of the day, we will look for more swing trades uh, and certain setups with that. We'll do more fade trading in the middle of the day. And then to the close, we'll do more trend trading, just as a general example. How far has the stock come? So that matters, obviously, as well. If you've got something that you know, is up, is up a bunch. Like for instance, uh, you guys are looking at shop and you know, that's been a big, big runner that's running into this 300 support area. Boy, if that story started to turn around, that could really go down a, a far way. Um, so we wanna be thinking about that. I did want to give you guys some other things to think about. So I think that's a, Good job by you guys. I think, that, I think that's a pretty good template. Some of you are gonna make more of certain of these items. <clears throat> Some of you are gonna add a few things that make more sense to you. Some of the things that we talk about is anchored VWAP for swing trading. Some of you may start thinking about that. For those who are more interested in fundamentals, you might start asking yourself, well, how many of the important banks are covering the stock and is there room for any of them to upgrade the stock or is everybody are all the banks with a buy rating on this particular name and is there really no more room for people to say good things about a particular stock that does matter and we'll talk more about that uh, as you get as you get a little bit more experience and you know, some guys are playing around with, you know, Armand and Nano are playing around with volume on the bid and volume on the offer, and is that particularly significant? So they build tools to figure out percentage of volume on the bid and the offer, and is that a factor that they're gonna start to use for their trading? The point of these extra considerations is you should have extra considerations. There should be things that matter more to you. Some of you will make more of the tape. Some of you will make more of the daily chart. Some of you perhaps will look at uh, where we are in relation to Bollinger Bands on a daily chart or a weekly chart. You will individualize that. that that's, per that's, that's perfectly fine. Some of you who are in the low float space will make more of the fundamentals and start to start your trades based on how you how 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 you think the stock can do going forward okay so look the challenge in this room for you guys today is for you to create your template 
all of you will create one and send it to Carlton and myself. And you will personally hold yourself accountable to making sure you never make a trade without knowing all of those things before you, make a, you trade a stock, save the occasional breaking news trade. But when you build your playbook for a breaking news trade, you will say to yourself that I know that I'm not going to be able to gather all this information on a breaking news trade right away, but I will build that trade knowing that, and because of that, I will make concessions to A, B, C, D. But you've pre-planned that. All right, so let's come up with a, with a personal template, and you'll personally hold yourself accountable, and we will as well. But again, the reason why we're making such a big deal about this is that this is a very competitive game. These seats that you sit in are very competitive. There are tens of thousands of people who apply for these seats. And you guys, you guys hold them. And then from here, even from here, to become successful is going to be the most challenging thing anyone in this room has ever done. And so, if you think that you can come in and not know exactly the details of a news catalyst for a stock you're trading and know that from the start and start gaining experience from the start and you think you're going to succeed, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. You are, I don't even want to say respectfully wrong, you know, it's our job to explain to you that's just wrong based on our experience over the last 20 years trading and training traders. That's just wrong. Every day you have to compete. This is a competitive job. Not everybody gets to do this for a living. This is like being a professional athlete. This is a privilege to be able to trade professionally. You will have all the resources you need to be good, but you have to do the work. And I've talked about this before, about winning each opportunity, win your playbook trade each day, win your AM preparation, win the 11 o'clock mentoring session, win your trader journal. So, you know, when you are preparing to trade stocks, you need to compete. You need to know all of those things and be ready to go. You need to compete. You need to win the AM preparation session every day. That needs to be your mindset. That's how you become as good as you can be. And when you, know, you guys see some of the guys who walk around, it's fun to be like them. We joked about one of the traders who bought the Tesla breakout trade, right? And made over $250,000 in one particular trading session. I think you guys want to have days like that, right? I would imagine that's, we all thought that was fun, right? That's, it's, it's fun to do that on a Friday and enjoy that weekend. But it starts, and it's going to take you guys time, but it starts in exercises like this. Now it's your turn. What would you add to our template of everything you need to know before trading a stock? Let us know by leaving a comment below right now.